properties for multiplication and division, which is handy because it follows the day that we learn subtraction and addition. So please write down the following multiplication property, and that is if segments or angles are congruent, then they're like multiples are congruent. And I'll explain to you what I mean very shortly. If segments or angles are congruent, then they're like multiples are congruent. And here's my example. For example, if I have a segment that I know is 3 and another segment that I know is 3, if I were to double each segment, then each of them would be how much? 6. six. And then they would still be the same, right? 6 would be equal to 6. And it works the same way if I cut things in half, if I divide. I could say if segments or angles start off as congruent or are congruent, then their like divisions are congruent. And the reason we say like is because we would um, multiply or divide by the same factor. We wouldn't say, well, if, I, if they start out congruent, I multiply 1 by 2 and 1 by 3. Well, of course, those multiples wouldn't be congruent. It has to be their like multiples or like divisions. So uh, how to use this? Um, first off, you know to use multiplication if you are given, write this down, please, the parts congruent, and you're asked to imply that the whole W-H-O-L-E's are congruent. If you're going from little to big, you would use multiplication. And conversely, if you're going, if you were, if you have the holes congruent, then you're asked to prove that the parts are congruent, then you'd use division. The only other thing you need uh, to be able to use these properties is this next big hint. So write down this big hint. The big hint is, put a star by it, if you have two givens of midpoint or two of bisect, then you know you're going to use multiplication or division and not uh, the definitions of midpoint or bisect. Abby? Sorry, what did you say next to the holes? So for multiplication, I said if you, would, if you have the parts congruent, it would imply the holes congruent. Like part of a segment, then you could say the big segment is congruent. What is the thing Oh, yes. Sorry, it's an arrow. That's an arrow. And so is this one. So I'm going to show you how you use this in a proof next. So in number one, we have midpoint twice. So already, bells are going off in our head. Ooh, Mrs. Galvan said that when we have midpoint twice, we should uh, use division or multiplication. Now it says, use this given that AX is congruent to YC. AX is congruent to YC. We have midpoint twice. So X is the midpoint of AB, so we know that these two would be the same, and that BY is congruent to YC, so those would be the same because Y is the midpoint of BC. But we're trying to prove AB congruent to BC. Since we were only given AX and YC, those are the parts, right? We can prove AB is equal to BC in one step. You don't need to use definition of midpoint. You don't need to say if, two, if a point is a midpoint, then it divides a seg into two congruent segs. Pretend we wrote the givens. We can already say that AB is congruent to BC. We, we were given a part, we are implying the whole, 
So we're, are we multiplying or are we dividing? We're multiplying. So you're going to go ahead and write out the multiplication pro property. If segs are congruent, then they're like multiples are congruent. This is a this is I would call a classic or a textbook use of the multiplication property. You see double midpoints, so you know the parts are congruent. And if you, you have one of the parts equal to an, uh, one of the parts on the other on the other segment, then you know that the whole segments must be congruent themselves. The other way to have done it would be to use the definition definition of midpoint twice, uh, use a property you haven't learned yet called the transitive property, and then use addition. So by knowing the, the multiplication and division properties, you're saving yourselves steps. All right, turn the page, and I'd like you to look at number three. You can write save for a test review for that one, but go to number three. Number three, it says, given BC bisects AD and it's bisecting AE. So we have two bisect givens. So right off the bat in your head you're going, oh my gosh, I have two bisect givens. I need to use either multiplication or division. And you were given this fact, that AD and AE were congruent. So I know that this whole thing is congruent to that whole thing. It's asking us to prove that AB is congruent to AC. This is going to be a two-step proof. Pretend we wrote the givens. And we're going from the whole to parts. We're going from a bigger segments to littler segments. Are we uh, then using multiplication or division? Eli? Division. Division. So we can say that AB is congruent to CE if segs congruent, then like divisions congruent. A midpoint or a bisector cuts a segment in half. So we cut two congruent segments in halves. So the halves, the div divisions, must be congruent. We're going to do one more example together. So when you're done writing that, look to number four on page 25. On uh, number four, um, we're going to use multiplication and division. We know we're going to because we have bisects twice, and that's a big hint. But it's not asking us to prove uh, an angle that would be helpful just with division. So we know it's going to be more than one step. So look, it says that VQ bisects uh, PVR. So we know that this angle is equal to that angle, but we're not going to really use the definition. We just want to know that this angle is the one that's being bisected. And that WT bisects SWU, so that one's the other one that's bisected. But what is it asking us to prove? It's asking us to prove that RVW is congruent to SWV. The, what that tells us is that we're going to have to do more steps. Okay? So let's first use um, either multiplication or division. So pretend we wrote the givens. And I'm going to actually erase what I wrote here just so you guys can see. We know, you guys, that 1 and 2 is congruent. And we know that uh, QV and WT bisected this angle and that angle. So if we have the little pieces, the parts, what can we say about the big angles, PVR and SWU? They're congruent. Perfect. S, so we could call it PVR, is congruent to angle SWU. And did we multiply or divide? Going from little to big, we multiply. So if uh, angles congruent, and the angle would be angles 1 and 2 were the ones that were congruent, then like multiples congruent. 
All of these facts added up to that. We've used all of our givens. 1 and 2 are equal. We have bisect twice. Well, that wasn't what we're trying to prove. We're trying to prove that this angle and this angle are congruent. Now we need to look to our diagram. Is there anything we can imply from the diagram? Maybe something supplementary? Who can name two supplementary angles? Abby? PWS and SWU. Good. So I'm actually going to call it VWS, um, but I'm only doing that because I want it to match this. Well, eventually. Okay? So we can call it angle SWU is sup to angle um, SWV. And how do we imply from a diagram something supplementary and, and reason that. What's our reason for that? We don't say assume from diagram, do we? Ooh, I'm, not, I'm not seeing enough people shaking their head no. What do we do instead? Uh, Eli? If two, form, if two angles form a straight angle, then they're right. Perfect. If two angles form a straight angle, then they are sup. So, we already named one pair of supplementary angles. We need to name another pair of supplementary angles. Who can do that for me? Griff? Uh, angles P, B, R, and R, V, W. And R, V, W, good. Also form a straight, and so that's all going to be on step three. In step two of our proof, the reason we had to do that, we had to say that P, V, R was equal to S, W, U, is because look, if those two are equal there, then according to congruent supplements, what's another pair of angles that are congruent? Uh, Matt? SWV and RVW. Perfect. Angle S, W, V is congruent to angle R, V, W. And who can give me my congruent supplements theorem? In good wording. Who can nicely word the congruent supplements theorem for me to write here in step four? You can even look back at your notes for 2.4 if you like. I just want to know, has somebody read it to me? Please. Everybody look back. Uh, Jazzy, go for it. If two angles are sup to the same angle, then they're congruent. Almost. If two angles are sup to congruent angles. There you go. If two angles are sup to congruent angles, then they are congruent. All right, you guys. Nice job.